Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome to Saturday Crafternoon. <laughs> Hi everyone, I know it's been a while, it's been a crazy couple of months, but I think that we are slowly getting back into the groove of things. So thank you all for joining and for those of you that are new, my name is Nancy from Gifts HQ and I hope these weekly live sessions to talk about all things crafting, things like embroidery, knitting, crocheting, um, and so much more. Anything crafting related, we'd like to kind of kick around different ideas, tips, and tricks to kind of help everyone out, especially those who are Etsy sellers or maybe you're interested in doing some type of craft fair. Um, you can get all kinds of ideas here and share some um, different techniques that you use on all kinds of different chats um crafts so go ahead and jump into the chat and make some friends um share some ideas and kick around some things that you'd like to do because we like to share all kinds of things on this channel and i hope you guys really enjoy any of the tips and tricks that i have and i'd like to kind of share that knowledge out with you guys so First, let's uh, just say hello to a couple of friends I see out there. So I see Sassy, I see Robin's Quilt Basket, Marion Allison, Judy Bauer, Jackie Holman, Gail Moore, Donna Phillips, Kathy, aka Crazy Knitting Nada. I still love that name. <laughs> I see Boricua Sewing and Cross, Amy Bulls, and Miss Max. How are you? Thank you guys so much for joining. So. Um, first off, I just want to thank everyone. Um, um, if you um, are new and you're not aware, uh, my dad recently passed away on June the 5th. Um, and we did hold um, the viewing as well as the burial service, um, which took place on the 11th on Monday. So it's been really chaotic um my dad had leukemia for a very long time and has been struggling with that um and towards the end it was very very difficult for the family still very difficult for me now um my life will not be the same there's a lot of changes that we'll have to make um we need to be there for my mom um, and support each other. Um, my mom is down here in South Florida with me, which is where I'm at. Um, she's about 20 minutes or so south of me. So, you know, a little bit of a distance, but you know, uh, there's a lot of back and forth that's been happening for well, many years, I guess now. <laughs> so it's just, you know, being there for her, being able to comfort. So I haven't really been in the craft room for quite some time because I've really been just focused on family and making sure that she's okay. Um, and I'll continue to do a lot of that. And for those of you who maybe already lost a parent, you'll realize how much needs to be done. There's just so many things that, you know, you don't even think of. And it's just, you know, an emotional moment. Um, it's also a moment where there's a lot of decision making that has to get done and there's moments of a lot of paperwork and all kinds of other settlements that you have to do so it's just crazy it's it's a crazy time so I really haven't been able to really be in, in my happy place um, however there were a couple little things that I was able to kind of um, do here and there so I'll share some of that with you but I really want to focus on a couple things because this is um, Father's Day, it's tomorrow. Um, so although my dad passed away, there are still things that you can do to, you know, just remember him. And for those of you who still have your father alive, there's all kinds of things that you can do um, for them. And they're all DIY related. They're all things that, you know, you can put together that I'm hoping really doesn't take too much time. So it's like, you know, you, I know time is of the essence for a lot of people, so it's really easy to just go out in the store and just buy some store-bought item, but it just means so much more when you try to do something for that person specifically. And there's all kinds of ways that you can do that, all kinds of customizations that you can do, um, and all kinds of different crafts that you can do it in, right? So you can do knitting, embroidery. You know, if you have a Cricut machine, there's just so many things. So I'm going to uh, kind of kick off some of those ideas today. Just kind of um, 
help those out who still are kind of struggling on not sure what they can do. Um, I'll share those with you today and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, let me just touch on a couple of other things. So one thing I wanted to make you aware of, um, if you're new to the channel especially, we're still hosting the trivia. Um, we host the trivia at the beginning of, of every live. And what we do is collect the points for everyone. So every quarter, um, there we do announce a trivia uh, master. And so we like to have a little gift for that person. So we do keep track of all of the points. Right now the points are one point each. We do this quarterly. So at the end of June, we'll be announcing our second quarter uh, trivia master. And we'll be doing that the first Saturday of July. So if you haven't, um, you know, had some fun with that, just jump on in and start answering the questions. We do keep track of through the chat on what you've answered. So we're able to monitor um, who has the most points and we do post that on our community page. So if you're new, I hope you enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. The uh, second quarter one will be ending probably pretty soon. A couple of weeks is what we have left. But then we'll be starting our third quarter and then our fourth quarter and we'll have our at the end of the year we'll have our final trivia champion that we'll be announcing as well so i hope you guys really enjoy that um we'll be putting those together for you weekly um so let's kind of just jump right in um got a lot to show you so one of the things that i wanted to talk about again is those dyi father's day presents that you can have um, and one of the first ones that I want to bring out to you, and let me just reach over here. This is something, I mean, I did this a while ago. Um, you've probably seen these wood, um, I guess pieces that you could get and you can pick these up at either Michael's or, um, you can probably get these online from Amazon. So these are some really nice thick pieces that you can get and they also come in all different sizes so this is a pretty large one um, but you can get smaller disc as well there's all kinds of different ones that you can get so you can do a lot of things with these um, you can go on your Cricut machine and get some vinyl to put on top right or you can try a little uh, wood burning so I tried that a little bit myself um, this was a few years ago actually and this was one that I did for a paddleboarding team that my son participates in so I did a little wood burning on that um, this was kind of like one of my first tries so it's you no know, it's not like the greatest but I wanted to kind of you know put something together and then I did another one that said 305 sub and that's the name of the team but you can pretty much put anything you want onto the wood and you can burn anything you want on there you just need a stencil right so you can outline it with your stencil and then just wood burn it or you can just freehand it if you are you know very creative and good at drawing and things like that i am not a very good drawer so i would use stencils other things that you can do is create the stencils if you have a cricut machine and you can put the stencils on the wood, outline it, and then try to go ahead and burn it. So these are some cute little items. You can have, um, go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they have these little wooden ridges where you can just, um, just uh, nail them on the back and just kind of have them hang it on the wall. So that's one way you can do it. But there's so many different things that you can do with these. I mean, these are just, an example of one that I did many many years ago um, and I was just kind of playing around with it I just had gotten the a little um, cheap little wood burning kit and I wanted to kind of try it out and so I did this and there were a couple other ones that I did that came out a little better and those I kind of gifted away so I don't have them with me so these were like my trial ones you know just me playing around figuring it out so just some of the ideas that you can have on here, you know, can have for the person's name, you know, there's so many things that you can do And I love dad, you know, there's, there's just ideas are endless. You can look up all kinds of designs and things that you'd want to do, you know, either use your Cricut machine. If you have um, Cricut access, 
you have access to tons of different templates that you can use as well. Um, these are just one idea that you can do. So this is, you know, one. Another one that I thought that you could also do is I've got this, I believe it was in five and below. This is just a laptop case and I got it for like five bucks and it's a pretty big case. And what I like about it, it was big enough that you can embroider on it. So this is something that you can also do. So you can either use your embroidery machine and since it's so big and opens up, you're able to go ahead and put it in. Even if you just have the single needle, you would be able to do that. Or you can, you know, if you have the multi needle, it makes it a lot easier, obviously, but um, most people do not have the multi needle. So, you know, this is something you can do, or you can use heat transfer vinyl to go ahead and put something and personalize that. You can put again, the person's name, you can put a really beautiful little message, something that means something to them, <coughs> excuse me, or you can um, maybe just look at what the person likes. Let's say they like to play golf or they like to play tennis, you know, then you can get a sports um, design and get that embroidered on here or also do it with the heat transfer vinyl. But that's just some of the ideas that you can do. And this is just, it's a laptop case. It's something that, you know, maybe they could carry around if, you know, if they have like tablets or, you know, laptops and things and, and they're kind of on the move all the time. That's just another great idea that you can have for them. Or if you don't want to do the laptop case, you can also do, um, you know, a smaller version of just maybe a pouch. You can sew up a pouch and do that. So, <coughs> Let me just grab a drink because my throat is really killing me. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, all kinds of th different things you can do on here. And I see a bunch of people on the chat talking about different ideas as well. Yes, um, Boricua Science Craft says you can also make a patch and sew it onto the laptop case. You can also buy the patches. Um, you i've seen a couple of patches that you can get from dollar tree so don't rule that one out because there's a couple of really cute ones that are out there and you can also use that to kind of decorate it around you know some people may want to take paint and maybe do their handprint and do handprints on to the case really you know especially with little kids you know you want you know little handprints all the way around with the word dad in the middle that's another really cute idea so all kinds of things you can do with the grandkids with you know kids you know the, the ideas are just endless so this is just you know another idea for you again you can also make it as a pouch so if you um if you don't want to do such a big laptop case you can also do a pouch and the pouch you can sew it yourself really simple to do you know, it's just a couple pieces of fabric, really doesn't have to be much. You can get just a fat quarter and that's plenty. That is more than enough to make a pouch. So you can probably make several of them. So you can do that, the dads, the grandpas, the uncles, you know, all kinds of stuff that you can do there. So definitely another gift that you can do. Um, let's see, the third item is making a card on your machine. So there's two different things that you can do. Now, if you recall um, a couple of lives back, I did do um, a live on making um, cards with your embroidery machine. So you were embroidering on the card stock itself. You can also make cards on your Cricut machine. And there's a couple that I've done. Um, these are like all kinds of different ones that you can do. So. Here's one that I did um, for a kid, you know, a little party thing. So this was something that you could do in layers. And this was done on the Cricut machine using cardstock paper with different colors on it. And it's just different layers. So this is one that you can do. The another one that you can do is just a thanks card. You know, there's you can do a dad card. You can use foil to make it really pop. 
So there's so many different ideas that are out there and different techniques that you can use to make these things. So let me just give you a better look at this is the one that I did with multiple layers and they're different colors. And so you can feel it's not a flat surface. You know, you can feel that it does have the raised um, papers. So there's all kinds of different um, layers on there and it just makes the card so much cuter. I think it makes it really pop. And then you can do cards with just foil and a design. In this case, I used my Cricut machine to draw out the flowers with a pen. And then I used the foil to have the foil in the background. So the letters are cut out and then the foil is in the back. But there's so many different ways that you can make these cards. You can just do a plain card. And let's say for me, I'm not crazy about my how my handwriting looks. So I like to use the Cricut machine to write out the cards for me. So you can do that as well. So if you have a Cricut machine, that's something that you can do. Or if you have great penmanship, you can just handwrite it yourself. Um, or just use the machine to make the actual cards and then you just you kind of put together your own little pieces. So it's something that you can do that really can be appreciated by anyone. Um, for Father's Day, that's another idea that you can have. Um, another idea that I have, let's see, is a lap blanket. So a lot of you ha guys have seen blankets baby blankets, lap blankets. So lap blankets are a little bit longer. They're not exactly full blown size for, you know, a bed. It's just a lap blanket for someone who's sitting on the couch that likes to maybe snuggle up with a blanket. Um, those you can find anywhere, five and below. You can even find them um, at Walmart, you know, just relatively low price. Just, I would stick with, try to stick with solid colors if you could. And then if you would border on that, you can, your design would pop. Now I would be cautious on the type of stabilizer that you use when you are embroidering something like a lap blanket. You know, I would definitely want to use the wash away on the top and probably tear away on the bottom just to make sure that your stitches are not going to sink into the blanket. And it really depends on how thick and plushy that blanket is. But definitely those are the two stabilizers that I would use on any typical um, lap type, lap blanket types. So let me just jump in here. I see a lot of people talking in the chat. <laughs> Sassy says, I want a Cricut machine. Yeah, Sassy, you know, and they're pretty relatively decent priced now. Um, I think the price has started to come down a bit. And there's also things like a Sizzler that are out there as well. But I have seen the Cricut machines go on sale multiple times at Joann's. I've even seen it in the clearance section at Walmart. So you may want to check that out. Or you can just try Facebook Marketplace. It doesn't need to be a brand new machine. You know, a used machine is totally fine because really what you're make, wanting to make sure the item that are sharp are the actual tools that you put into the machine. Like the machine itself is just going to turn on and off and, and kind of go back and forth. But the tools itself is what you want for it to be sharp. Like the little knife set, the things that you put into the machine for it to actually do the cutting. That's what you really want to make sure it's maintained well so that the cuts are crisp. And those are relatively inexpensive in comparison to the machine itself. So definitely, you know, if you're thinking about getting a older machine, that is totally fine. If you're thinking of getting one, you know, that's just on a clearance section, you can do that too. Don't be worried about the updates because yeah, you can just do um, online. Um, they do give you access to Cricut. So you have all kinds of Cricut access has all kinds of designs. Um, fonts, letters, shapes, I mean anything you can think of I think they pretty much have captured it. So you can capture all kinds of things in that application or you can just make your own, right? So you definitely have that advantage as well. Alrighty, let's 
see. And Judy says, I don't think many of us like our handwriting or how our voices sound on the recording. Yeah, definitely, Judy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, my handwriting, like, bleh, hate it. <laughs> but, you know, that's why I like things like Cricut and all kinds of other things. They can really make it look nice. <laughs> Oh, Boricua says, blankets are so popular to embroider. Grandparents love lap blankets. Yes, they do. Kathy says, my husband crocheted his dad a lap blanket and his dad loved it. Now we have it and my husband will use it. <laughs> my FIL passed away in October this past year. Oh, sorry about that, Kathy. Hey, Donna says, I have an embroidery design for the In The Hoop remote control TV for Dad. Never made it, but a cute idea. Awesome! A remote control holder for Dad. It fits over the arm of his chair and has a pocket for the remote. Yes, that's a great idea. So so for those of you who have dads or grand grandparents or uncles that like to like, you know, be on the couch, watching TV, maybe playing their video games, even for kids, you know. They have these really great um, in the hoop type projects that you can make and they will basically just stitch out um, kind of like a little caddy like but for the couch. So you can kind of put it over the arm and it hangs out with the pockets and then you can put the remotes in there. I know the remotes, at least in my house, are always disappearing. No one ever knows where they are. They're always ending up in the couch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great idea because then hopefully, you know, you'll be easily able to find it sometimes. So great idea, Donna. I totally agree with that. <laughs> Amy says, I have the little Cricut Joy and it's a great way to learn how to use it. The only thing you're really limited on the size of the project. Yes, that's true, Amy. The Cricut Joy is very small. I mean, it's really cute because you can carry it and take it wherever you want. It's really, really portable. But the one that I have is my Cricut Maker. And I have the original Maker. I don't have the Maker 3, which was the other one that came out afterwards. I have the Cricut Maker and I love that machine. I have used it a lot. I haven't used it lately because I really haven't been in the craft room a lot. But I also get ideas just from the Cricut as well. Just looking through Cricut Access and seeing what people are doing and people are able to post things on there as well. So it's really a great way for you to kind of not just make things also, but also to use it to get ideas as well. So definitely. Okay, Jackie says, make sure to give Nancy a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's move on because I got a couple of other things that I want to show you. So let's see. Um, we talked about the lap blanket. The next idea is an apron like the one I'm wearing. <laughs> so there's all different ways that you can make an apron. If you have a dad, grandpa grandparent or uncle that loves to cook, maybe they're the good barbecue person. You know, you may want to just pick up an apron and there's all kinds of things that you can get in all types of different aprons you can get. You know, you have the ones that just kind of tie on the bottom. You have the ones that come over the neck line like this. You know, there's all different ones that you can get. And the design itself that you can put on there, there's so many different ways you can do it. You can use your Cricut machine and do the heat transfer vinyl. That's one way of doing that. Or you can screen print it yourself. And there's tons of screen printing kits that you can pick up, like Hobby Lobby is uh, one, for example, where it'll have the kit for you to be able to screen print it. Or you can embroider something for them onto the apron. So it's, there's just so many different things that you can do. Some people also use paint. Again, another idea with the hands. You know, they can use paint or they can just draw on the fabric itself. So, you know, various different ways for you to put your designs and ideas to show and personalize the items for these um for the person but the different techniques that you can use can vary and there's so many different ways that you can do it that some vary in terms of complexity some are a little bit easier like maybe if you just want to paint you know it's just opening up the paint and you know putting whatever you want on to the apron, but you know, maybe that requires you to be a little bit more artistic, or if you want to use a template, you kind of want to be careful with that because 
the paint can bleed underneath the template and it would cause bleeding on the design itself. So it wouldn't be as crisp as you would want it to be. You can put patches onto the apron as well. You know, there's so many different things that you can do, you know, if you just pick, I what, and what I would recommend is you would pick your base. You know, what is it that you want to give the person, whether it be the apron or the laptop case or something for them to hang on to their wall, something like the wood blocks, you know. First, pick out your base. Once you have the base, pick out your design. And once you have the design, now figure out how you want to put that design onto the product whether you're going to use your Cricut machine and do heat transfer vinyl or you're just going to do vinyl on top or maybe you're going to embroider it maybe have some patches you want to use maybe you want to sew something put that together instead you know just figure out all your options and you know first i would focus on what the product is going to be that you're going to put your designs on and then i would focus on the design itself and then figure out what technique would be the best way to do that. So, you know, aprons is one if you have that person who loves to cook or again is part of the barbecue set. I've also done a video on decoupage. So if you're someone that maybe they, they're in the kitchen and they like to do stuff, you can decoupage some plates for them. And let's say they're a golfer, you can get something with golf clubs on there, you know. There's so many things that you can make in the kitchen. If you've got the Cricut mug press, you can do the mugs. You know, I would really just focus on what that particular person's really into, whether it be sports or if it's cooking, you know, or just any specific thing that, you know, they're in, you know, and then just focus on that design. So that's one thing that you can do as well. Uh, let's see, I see a few more comments pulling in here. Let's see, uh, oh, it's kind of scrolling kind of fast here. <laughs> so I see Taisha said it's similar to the brother scan and cut can be used with or without the internet. I have both. Okay, I've made some cute, Donna says I made some cute nip holders on my embroidery machine. I did a Jack Daniels whiskey theme. Ooh, but you can embroider any design on your holder. Nice. I'd love to see that one, Donna. <laughs> okay. So, Borico is telling us that you have to pay for the subscriptions to use their designs or you can pay for the designs individually. Yes. Um, if you're talking about the Cricut, the Cricut does charge you, I think it's like $9.99 a month for um, access to several designs. Um, or you can just use the free design. So, it, it depends what you want to do. You don't necessarily have to subscribe to Cricut Access, but if you do, you get so much more. Um, but you do have some free designs that you can get as well, and you can pick those up at any of the um, other websites out, that are out there. You can just type in, go to Google, and type in free. Um, if you want to do embroidery, do free embroidery designs or free HTV designs, you know, or just type something like that in, and you'll have a whole bunch of websites that offer that. So definitely check those out. Always do the freebies first. <laughs> all righty judy says yes i have the cricket expression oh it takes she has cricket expression and it takes cartridges oh yeah that one's a little more complicated because of the cartridges all righty now i see a lot going on barbecue towel sets are cute for any occasion yes donna that's a great idea nice Okay, I'm going to go to move on and let's look at the next item. So the next item is a canvas and I think I have one here. I can show you. Let's see. Second. So this is a canvas that I did and this one I did. I don't know, maybe a couple months ago. Um, and this is just embroidery on a canvas. So again, another idea that you can make is on the canvas itself, and you can pick these up in any Dollar Tree, or you can pick these up at Michael's, Walmart, any place where you can buy these canvases. They're relatively cheap, and sometimes they come pretty much in a pack, so you can get several. Um, or you can just get one like a, a 
all kinds of different sizes. They have large, larger sizes than this. Um, I just wanted to do something um, simple and small. So I think this one's about a five by seven. And one thing that you can do that I did not do is you can paint the canvas itself. And then after you've painted it and it's dried, then go ahead and embroider or put a patch or, you know, do your other design so that it has that background. So I did not do this. I just went ahead and embroidered it on the canvas, but I can kind of go back and do that middle um, paint in the background. I was kind of thinking of doing like a little sky, um, very light blue color. Maybe put some clouds on here just to, you know, spruce it up a little bit. So it's a little bit plain for me, um, but you know, you can put the person's name. Um, maybe if they've actually, if they served in the army, the Navy, Marines, you know, you can do the emblem for those organizations as well. You know, you can do that as a gift and they can then take this and hang it on the wall and, you know, you can have that. Or you can do something really simple, you know, like just little sayings or a little poem or just something as simple as I love you, dad, or I love you, grandpa. You know, those are simple little things that you can do on here as well. And you can either, you can paint them by hand if you want to. You can use stencils, you can embroider on it or you can hand embroider it as well. There's other things that you can do with that. So hand embroidery is another skill. Now, I'm not too um, great at hand embroidery. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think that's a great craft. I think it just involves a lot of practice on that craft. And since my time's pretty limited, I haven't really been able to do that. But hand embroidery can do absolutely beautiful things. You can also get cross stitch kits that come and you can do cross stitching as well or latch hooks. I used to do those as a kid. I used to love those things. They come with little, um, little packs of pieces of yarn and you would just latch it and hook it on to a canvas that they kind of give you that's plastic and it at the end of the day looks like a little rug that has the design as long as you follow the colors of when of the different ones that you're supposed to make so i remember doing those as a kid i used to love those had a ton of those um but that was a lot of fun so that's something very simple especially for kids if they're just starting out these are the types of projects that they would kind of you know jump into and they have a lot of fun doing it and they're learning the craft and they start to grow and build their skills from there so Yet another project that you can do. Let me get what the next one is. Caps, embroidering caps. Now I didn't get a chance to embroider it, but I was able to pick up this cap here. And this cap, I got it for $3.49. And I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It was one of those, you know, clearance type things. It's kind of a velvety type of um, hat, but definitely something that you can embroider here or you can add a patch to. So something that you can do. I did embroider one for my dad and, and he wore it a few times and I had that um, with, a, um, with a Volkswagen Beetle on here. And I'll show you something similar to that in a few. It was the same exact design, other, but I did do it on the hat. So he, I have a couple pictures of him wearing it. So I actually really love that. That's another idea, you know, if they're into wearing caps, that's something that you can do also. And then um, one of the other things that I did, and this was on the Cricut machine, is doing a tile. So this is something that I did um, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, you can pick up these glass tiles and you can see here it's just a glass tile. You can pick these up from Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, they're really inexpensive. And what I've done with that is I went ahead and I used my Cricut machine and I just used vinyl. I used the premium vinyl and I went ahead and I did the design and did a little stain and then put it on there. And I thought it came out really cute. Um, I did give these out as, um, as some, of you, some of you may already know. My son's autistic and he participates in Special Olympics and he's in the stand-up paddleboarding team. And so for the paddleboarding team, we want to go ahead and give some little gifts to the coaches. So this was one that I made for one of the coaches that's really special to us. 
and um, we were able to give those out. And what we do with those is I got the tile, went ahead and got the uh, Cricut machine and put the vinyl on it. And then I picked up these little stands that you can get and they kind of just fold. So it's just a little stand you can pick up and you can display your item onto the scan. So you would just kind of hook it on here and then you would just put it down and it would just stand up on its own. So it's, it's a nice way for them to be able to display the items that you're giving them. But this is a great way and there's so many different things that you could make with this. This is really just something that I thought is nice that they can have in their home and they can kind of just put it on a mantle or something and it will really pop. You can do all kinds of sayings on here as well. So I thought that would be another great idea. And there's all kinds of different tiles that you could use with decorative ones and make that makes it really beautiful. So another great idea. And then one last idea that I had was one that I kind of posted on my Facebook group and I think a few people are talking about it on the chat. So there are handkerchiefs that you can make. Now I did make a couple of handkerchiefs um, for my dad and I'll show you a couple of them here. Um, but these are just the plain handkerchiefs that I picked up at, um, I believe it was Amazon. Um, I made a couple of handkerchiefs for uh, a baby shower. And so I picked them up and it was, I came in like a pack of like 50. And so I wasn't sure what to do with the rest of them. And it just so happened, you know, for my dad, you know, I kind of walked into the craft room and I said, oh, wait, you know, I thought that, you know, this would be a nice memento to give out to the people who attended the service. So I went ahead and I embroidered a couple and I'll just share a few of them that I have left over because a lot of them um, I've already given out. Um, but here's one where I did put his name, birth date, and I just embroidered a heart in the bottom. Now I do have to kind of iron these better. So these are kind of just um, some leftover ones. And then I did do different colors. This was in the silver. Then I wanted to go ahead and try it on the gold. And I think you'll be able to see the gold a little bit better. Let me try to angle this. So I thought that that would be a nice memento for those that attended the service and they can kind of keep it as a keepsake. Um, and I can always have that around. Um, I did do one. Now he, my dad was a big um, Volkswagen fanatic. <laughs> so the very first car that um, he had was a Volkswagen bug. And so I went ahead and embroidered that onto the napkin. I'm sorry, the, the handkerchief. And so I kind of want to do a little design on top. Maybe you can do, I love you, dad. You know, if you have someone who's like a mechanic or they're into cars, you can get all kinds of um, designs that you can pick up and do all kinds of sayings on there. So I thought that would be a cute idea to kind of give as a gift as well, you know, at, for Father's Day. Um, I went ahead and did these for those that attended the service, but you can really use these for any occasion. So I thought that would be a cute one to do. And then when I did do them, like this one is just has the top part. I haven't done the bottom yet but you'll see here what i did use for this was the sulky sticky stabilizer and i'll put that on here for you guys so it's sticky fabric solvi by sulky this is the stabilizer that i use for the handkerchiefs um it really did a great job where i didn't have any puckering on here and it was able to kind of stitch it out nicely. This is what it looks like. I kind of, once it was done, I cut around it. And so all I'll have to do now is soak this in water and the stabilizer will disappear. And then once it disappears, you'll just have 
the regular stitching on the back. And so the stabilizer will be gone. So you can see here, then you can kind of see through the handkerchief and you don't see the paper backing on it. Like all of this will be gone. Okay. But it's pretty easy to do. I did do this on the SC1900. So if you have a single needle machine, you know, again, that's something that you can put together and it will be relatively easy to do. Uh, now I did it in two different hoopings. I did the first hoop on my five by seven size hoop um, in order to fit the name and the dates the way I wanted it to go. And then I just rehooped the bottom piece the bottom design, I just did it on a four by four hoop and that worked totally fine. You can make them obviously bigger, but I just wanted to kind of keep it kind of condensed and together. Okay, so I see Judy says, they say so much love, you put your heart into those beautiful Oh, thank you, Judy. Sassy says, what size needle did you use for the handkerchief? Actually, Sassy, I used 7511. Um, and it worked just fine with that. You know, and I was kind of like in a rush doing things and I wasn't really even paying attention to the needle size because everything was just so much was going on. And it was just something that I decided to kind of make at the last minute. And so, you know, I just used what I had on hand and it was a 7511 needle and it turned out just fine. Just fine for that. Uh, one minute says, says you are a good daughter. Your dad was blessed. Oh, thank you. Aisha says, I love them. They are beautiful. Okay, Donna's asking about what font did you use on the handkerchiefs? Um, Maya. I believe it was the Maya font. Number three. Maya three. And I kind of just shrunk it down <clears throat> to bring it down to the size so it would fit the handkerchief. And then I went ahead and just stitched it out. So I did um, look at it in um and in brilliance i was kind of searching around but at the end i believe it was the maya font that i used and that one was fine um there were a couple other fonts that i played around with but i think this one was the one that i liked the most um i just like the way the n falls so it really you have to kind of play around depending on the letters that you're using um sometimes you know i'm not too crazy about how the um Oops, I think we lost something here. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I think sometimes the the letters themselves that you're choosing to pick, you know, may look a little bit better on one particular font type than another. I liked the way the letter N is. So that's, and the M. So that's why I kind of chose this font. Sometimes they have the little curly line and they kind of make it like a little script. You, you kind of have to play around with them, but I did use the Maya uh, 3 font for this one. Let's see. Oh, they're beautiful, Nancy. Great idea. Thanks, J Love. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, and now these will be a keepsake, like Miss Judy said. Yes, yes, definitely. It's a keepsake, and that, that's kind of the idea just kind of hit me I mean we knew we had some family coming down for the service and everything and I just thought you know everyone will then you know walk away they always have the little cards that they give you at the services and stuff and we have those as well but I wanted something a little bit extra a little extra keepsake and for those you know that really couldn't attend <clears throat> the service if they are far away and they just couldn't make it you know this is something that I can also you know ship ship over to them and and have them you know so they have this as a memento as well uh judy says did you get the handkerchiefs off amazon yes i did i did and i bought it um i brought it a long time ago <laughs> um because i did get it for a baby shower gift and i was doing something for the baby shower and putting the um designs together for that but, um, you know, that was a long time ago and I had all this leftover um, handkerchiefs because it came in like a, I think it was a, a pack of 50 or so, or maybe it was a hundred. I really don't remember. Um, but it's nothing very special. They have some really beautiful handkerchiefs that you can get or you can even um, kind of crochet the edges 
and make them really delicate. So you can do that as well. Um, but I just kind of used what I had on hand. Like I said, I bought them for a baby shower and I, I did those gifts a while back. And so because I had all this left over, it was kind of like, you know, I can make some really pretty handkerchiefs and have them as a memento for everybody. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, add that as a little extra. Um, so these are kind of the little top little quick gifts that you can make for your Father's Day or Grandpa or any of those special in your lives that are fathers since our Father's Day is coming up tomorrow. Um, there are so many more that you can do and for those who no longer have their fathers um, with them like myself, you know, you can also make memorial type things um, that light up as well. You can make uh, shadow boxes that have lights, fairy lights in the background that kind of pop out the different designs similar to what we were talking about for the Cricut machine with the different layers. You can have that as well. There's candles. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Just have to be a little bit creative and, you know, just kind of do a little research, see what designs you'd like. Once you have that set in your mind, it's just really a matter of trying to figure out which type of craft you want to do, whether it be knitting, embroidering, maybe use the Cricut machine. Maybe you're just going to wing it and hand, you know, paint it or do something like that. It's just of different ways for you to think about how to get something done. So I see a lot more comments coming through. <laughs> the handkerchiefs were a great addition. Everyone loved them. Thanks. That's my sister from Buddy Questioning and Crafts. It was a super great idea. Thanks. One minute tips. J Love said, Your parents did an excellent job. You and your sister are very sweet and thoughtful and humble. Oh, thank you, J Love. I appreciate that. And Robin says, Robin's quilt basket, a very nice addition. Donna says, I think the simple hankies are appropriate for a memorial. For ladies, maybe white on white floral. Yes, you know, Donna, you bring that up. I did do, um, and I don't have them because I kind of gave them away. I did stitch out some of the designs in white thread, even though it was a white hanker handkerchief. And I was kind of hesitant on how that was coming to come out. And it actually came out pretty cute. It, it was um, it was really nice. I liked the way it did stitch out. I was a little worried that you wouldn't really be able to see it, but you could. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any with me, and I don't know on the camera if you'd be able to really see it. So I'm kind of glad I had the silver and gold ones left over so you guys could kind of see what was stitched out. But definitely, you know, <clears throat> that's something that you can do and it will turn out nice. It does look nice with the white on white on here. Now, one thing I did not try is I didn't try like metallic threads or anything like that. Um, I'm sure something like that I would want to experiment on and see how that would work. But, you know, definitely with metallic thread, you would have to slow down that machine, you know, and, and be weary of it because especially if you're doing fonts that are kind of thin like this, you're going to have a lot of difficulty with metallic thread. So probably would have to big a thicker font, you know, that's a lot fatter in between. And then that would probably look nice as well. Okay. <laughs> Aw, Donna says, I'll be thinking of you tomorrow, the first Father's Day without your dad. It will be a difficult day for you. Yes, it will. It will. And actually today is my mom and dad's anniversary as well so that kind of makes it difficult so this is going to be a really tough weekend for us uh, being that this would have been their 57th um, wedding anniversary um, and then father's day as well so it's 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 tough but you know just stay strong take it one day at a time and you know we're trying to just get through it so as i kind of get through it i can't say that i'm just gonna jump in and you know i'm i'm all good i'm just gonna take things a day at a time and slowly kind of build back and try to kind of make the new life together because again nothing's going to be the same um, for me but I definitely still love crafting and I want to continue that so that's something that you know I will be building back slowly forward um, just have a little bump in the road and you know we'll try to get through some of this so you know all kinds of things you can do but again I want to thank you guys for all your love and support we received emails, cards. I really, truly appreciate everything that you guys done. It's really helped a lot. And, and I, I just, 
thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really truly appreciate everything for reaching out. Everyone has really been really sweet and I, I truly appreciate it. But um, I think that's all I have. Um, I do have a little tribute to my dad um, that I would like to show you in the end. So if you guys can just tune in and we'll play the little tribute for you. And I hope you guys really enjoyed today's session and we'll be kind of slowly coming back on board and hoping to get more videos out to you. There's so much more that I do want to show you guys, but I hope you really enjoyed this little tribute for my dad and I hope to be crafting with you guys soon. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you.